September's here already and it's time for another gardening update. So let's go take a look. Many of the project peppers are starting to get their ripe colors now. And this is the one that I've been calling conehead. Even though many of them aren't cone shaped at all. Some of them are round and some of them are a little bit larger and round. I'll be picking which plants to save seeds from very soon. This container has two different versions of the variegated pepper that I'm working with. Both versions start out cream colored, then one ripens to orange and the other ripens to red. A third version starts out green, although some of the peppers are actually variegated like the foliage, then later ripens to red. This is the variegated version of the one that I've been calling black cherry. It looks very much like the jigsaw peppers that Baker Creek sells. And I'm not sure what the peppers are all going to look like when they ripen yet. Here's some of the ones that I've been calling black cherry. I'm thinking of discontinuing this line simply because it looks so much like a black pearl. Here's a look at some of the stuff that I planted for fall. It's the first time for planting some of these in the fall for me. So I'm not sure how they're going to all work out but we'll soon find out. Here's a look at the Aconcagua pepper that I have growing in the grow bag and quite a few of those are starting to ripen now. It has good sized peppers that are fairly large and plentiful. Here's that mutant pepper that I told you about. It didn't look anything like a pepper at all until it got peppers on it. The foliage is very unique and rather odd for a pepper. Here's a look at the upright black pearl hybrids. I really don't see any that I want to carry forward from this group, even though they do have some interesting colors. In the next grow bag are some F2 Oda crosses. These are the ones that crossed with the black pearl hybrids. And I have one that I'm going to carry forward from that group for sure. And maybe one more. I'm still thinking about that one. Here's one of the F2 Oda crosses, and this is why I think it crossed with the Black Pearl hybrids. It looks just like one. Just below it is the one that I'm going to carry forward for sure. It's got some really nice flavored hot peppers. And here's a closer look at one of them. I'm going to be planting some seeds from these indoors very soon. I'm hoping to keep the same level of heat in these. Here's another Aconcagua pepper that I have in the ground, and it also has a whole lot of decent sized peppers on it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be growing this one again, and maybe for years to come. Of course it could be beginner's luck, but I like what I'm seeing from it so far. Now for a closer look at the winter choy and other fall crops. Here's Chijimasai. The sugar and snap peas, I'm not sure if these are going to have time or not, but we'll see. The crisp mint lettuce is off to a good start, and so is the May Queen lettuce. I planted the carrots a little earlier than everything else, and one nice thing about the carrots is that they're very cold hardy. The arugula is doing well, and so is the ragged jack kale. Like everything else, I planted the turnips way too thick. And here's some radishes that we'll be enjoying before long. I've already thinned the kohlrabi, and I'll be eating some spinach thinnings very soon. Right next to the spinach is some Swiss chard, and I thinned that right after I shot this clip. The green tatsoi is growing very well, and so is the baby bok choy. Both of these need to be thinned. We've already eaten some cilantro thinnings and we'll eat some more before I get it down to where I want it. The volunteer basil in that grow bag will also be ready to use soon. The Pippin's Golden Honey produces a lot of peppers, but it's not one of my favorites. I probably won't grow this one again next year just because I have so many other types to choose from. This is the F2 Oda Cross, and I'm really liking this pepper a lot. And I hope it stays close to what it is now in the next generation, but we won't know until I get there. I'm guessing there will probably be a little bit of difference, but I hope not too much. This is the Jimmy Nardello, and I like that pepper a lot, and I plan to keep growing it. The Ahi Cachucha, or Ahi Dulce, finally produced some ripe ones. I'll be doing a taste test of that 
in weeks to come. The Aconcagua pepper produces a lot of pepper and some of them are much larger than this one. We plan to make some stuffed peppers with these in the next few weeks. I'm liking that one quite a bit. Another pepper that kind of surprised me was the candy cane. It's not a great pepper in my opinion, but I think it is worth growing. I'm saving seeds from those and I'll be growing some next year just to see what they do. Here's a look at some albino bullnose peppers. The ripe one is the red one on the left and the unripe one is the light colored one changing to orange. I went back and harvested a few more peppers. These purple ones are called Oda and it's a sweet pepper and it's just a good dependable pepper that I grow almost every year and when ripe they look like this. This one is a very small one. The purple ones there are more typical of the size. Then I also picked some of the Buena Mulatas. They start out purple then change to kind of a light yellow then orange and then finally red when fully ripe. They're a pretty hot pepper coming in around 30 to 50,000 on the Scoville scale. So if you like a lot of spice, that's a good pepper to grow. I was going to wait another week or two before I harvested the sweet potatoes, but I found a good time to do it, and I couldn't take the suspense anymore. The first bale I harvested had a unnamed purple variety that I got at Trader Joe's a few years ago, and it also had some called Korean Gold in the middle. I was a little disappointed in the overall results of the sweet potatoes this year, but we had a really rough year for growing just about anything. If I decide to do a video on the sweet potato harvest, I'll go into more detail about why I thought things didn't work out as well this year in those videos. In the second straw bale, I had red garnet sweet potatoes and also some Korean gold in the middle like the other bale. On one end it didn't do too bad, but I've had better years. But once again, if I end up with more than I started with, I just have to be thankful. If you grew sweet potatoes this year, let us know how yours did. That's one nice thing about having a YouTube channel. I probably learn more from you guys than you do from me. In case anyone is wondering, we're still pretty hot here in the 90s, but it was supposed to cool down this weekend, and I hope it does. We still have some hummingbirds and orioles hanging around, so we're still feeding those, but in a couple of weeks, those will go on about their way. They usually leave sometime in September after a strong cold front. They usually show up in our area about the third week in April, so we've got to enjoy them for a good long time. And if you're wondering what we feed them, we feed them plain grape jelly, and they like it a lot. Just above the feeder, there's a little thing called an ant moat, and it holds water and keeps the ants from getting to the grape jelly. If you're just now finding this channel, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.